carries, I think he carries his immense responsibilities with great dignity and great aplomb and indeed a great sense of humour because he's always on for a laugh. Would you give a wa warm welcome to the EU Commissioner for Employment and Social Affairs, Padraig Flynn. Here he is, big fella. Oh, you're too big. You're too big. How are you? Come in and sit down. Come in and sit down. There you are. Oh, oh. oh yes. You're laughing now, P, but narrow escape yesterday. Did you get the shock of your life? You were nearly gone, you and the rest of the gang. Survived it once again. Survived it once again. You're used to survive. But did the others get a fright, P? Did they think they were gone? Uh, press, I think we might have all had now. a few frights over the last couple of weeks. Yes. But at the end of the day, it was quite clear that the members of the European Parliament did not want to sack the college as a whole, yes, and the, the whole old, 20 of us. And the old dog for the hard road, you could count the numbers like you did in Casabar on many occasions. Well, I did them in Casabar right. and a few yeah, other places yeah, up in town here too on a few occasions. Yeah. And got them right on a few yeah. occasions yes. and not so right on a few other occasions. But you got them right on this occasion. I had them right here that they didn't have the numbers. But I it was expect very... you, a man of probity and integrity and upstanding nature always, to threaten to resign <laughs> if this man is not reinstated. No, 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 I'm not going to resign. Never resign. Oh, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. no. Never resign. No. That... <laughs> well, I tried. I tried. Poor Mr. Putin. No. Yes, yes. No, no, no. no. Yeah. That, that, I'm not going to resign, but uh, they but have, they to, have the authority. The Parliament has the authority to sack us, but they can't sack individual commissioners. You can only yeah, sack I'm... the whole commission as yeah, a whole. I know that, they would like to be able to sack individual commissioners if it's found that they have but not I'm, done I'm the job. But are you all without sin, P, now? Are you all without sin? in this whole thing. What kind of sins are you talking all about All sorts of sin. I'm talking about all <laughs> sorts of sin. All sorts of sin. Well, insofar as management of the funds are concerned, you mentioned before I came in that I have a budget of nine, nine. and a quarter billion. billion. A lot of money. And I have about 750 people working for me. Now, I have responsibility for 45 budget lines. And when I went there first, there was a lot of difficulty with the major fund that I have. That's the social fund, the nine billion fund. Speaking, Pete, there's a huge amount of waste and a lot of corruption going on. It, not, a lot of, not a lot of corruption, waste. but there is a certain amount of waste and certain amount of mismanagement. And I'll tell you why. We don't run services. We run programs. 90 billion a year is spent by about 15,000 civil servants. Now, it's not running services. It's giving it out in grants and programs all over the world. And we do not have the staff to run these programs ourselves. So we contract in outside consultants, and we have found that some of these consultants, there are huge weaknesses yes. there, and we send in people to examine them. When we find mistakes, we stop the payments. But I have to say to you, some money does go astray. Okay. Now, you do all of this off your own bat. You have immense power, Pete. You have immense power. This, you? Yes, you have. The commission job. is a very powerful yes. But, it's a very but, powerful but institution. You as the commissioner have immense power. You are a pretty solo runner in all of this sort of thing. Well, we set Council the issue of ministers and the parliament yeah. finally decide. We're getting back to you. Do you love it? Yes. You love the power. Well, you love I don't know what's the sense yet. of power, but yeah, is you, get, you power, get the yeah. opportunity at this level of doing something substantial and leaving something behind you. Now, it's a question of motivation. And in politics, you know, there are two types there are two types of politicians, really, front runners and safe people. Now, in a government like here, you have to get the balance right. Because if you have too many front runners, they keep knocking the fences and you're in trouble. The safe people keep everything nice and even. So you've got to get the balance right. Now, the front runners, they're motivators. But of course, they take terrible risks because they identify yes. problems and they try and, yes. put the, they try and put the solutions in place as against the ideological And you're attitude. a front runner. You've said it. You're a front runner. You've said it. That's the way you like to be. Well, it's, okay. it, it's the way the excitement Come is. back home for a moment. What are you going to do about the Flood Tribunal and the 50 grand, Gilmore? Well, I want to tell you about that. Yes. I've said oh, my piece about that. In fact, I've said too much because you can get yourself in the High Court for undermining the Tribunal. So I ain't saying no more about this except to say just one thing, and this is all I'll say. I never asked or took money from anybody to do favours for anybody in my life. But you know Gilmart. Oh, yeah. You know Tom Gilmart. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen him now for some years. I see. I met him. He's a Sligo man yes. who went to England, made a lot of money, came back, wanted to do a lot of business in Ireland. Didn't work out for him. Didn't work out for him. He's not well. His wife isn't well. And he's, he's out of sorts. But you're saying you never took money from anybody at any time for any reason. I never took money from anybody to do a political favour insofar as planning is concerned. Well, 
MEPs make a, an annual salary of, I think, 35 grand, plus they can make anything up to 200 grand a year in expenses. Is it the same for uh, commissioners? Well, I don't know how much exactly they get, but you're quite right that they do get the same salary, the starting salary, as a TD would get here at home, right? Then yeah, they get expenses more, for going... Close oh, to yes. five times that. Oh, yes, they get, they get expenses for going over and back. I don't know exactly what it is. And as far as I am concerned, I get, give or take, it works out at about with expenses 140,000 a year and I pay 30.3% tax on that so it's about a net 100,000 and out of that 100,000 I run a home in Dublin, Castle Bar and Brussels. I want to tell you something, try it sometime when you've got the cars and, and three houses and three homes and a few housekeepers and I want to tell you and everything else but remember it's a well paid job, it's a well paid job, about 100,000 a year net. Running three houses, do you need three houses? Well, I have to live and somewhere. In Brussels, yes. no. <laughs> and then Dublin. Yes. And, then, and, and Castle Bar. Yeah. So you're in and, and don't forget, it's a very interesting thing, and, and, I, and I know very well that the families here will understand this, that even though you're not living in a house, if you're coming back to it every month, you have to heat it course, and yeah. light it. Well, 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 I'm not yeah. talking about uh, the carry babies or things like that. I'm talking about a lot more serious things yeah. which affect the day-to-day -day lives of uh, people in Ireland and in Europe. Now, yeah. why is it that the working class people, which are the main taxpayers in the country, why are they the ones who have to pay for all these tribunals? Who and else it, it's, it's quite clear to us, the people of Ireland, that these people are guilty, but nobody gets prosecuted. Well, first of all, when a tribunal sits, it makes recommendations. And if people are found guilty of something, they can be prosecuted. But you're quite right when you say that any tribunal set up by Dáil Éireann has to be paid by the taxpayers. But That's right. It, That's right. right. It, no yeah. question about in, that. In our eyes, and like, I live in, an, uh, in Finglas in Dublin, and listening to people around me and work, like, you are criminals to us. Ah, it, no, that's... But a, that's... Ah, no. Ah, ah, <laughs> not Pete. They're more, more, they're more sophisticated criminals. They might not have a, a balaclava and a gunman they're robbing. <laughs> <laughs> <Did you? laughs> well, well, when you see... <laughs> When you see what's happening in America and you see what's happening in Europe now and you see what's happening in... There is some effort to clean up the act, isn't there? There is a general cleansing going on. It uh, may take a long time. And that's what all yeah, this yeah, argument yeah. in the European Parliament is about, too. Trying to get a much more open and accountable system. a lovely young lady. Right. Oh, sorry, I'll take a phone call first. Yeah, what line? Yeah. Line four. Hello, line four. Good evening. Good, good evening, Gay. Yes. Pat Cox, MEP here. Oh, hello, Pat Cox. I'm sorry that I'm suffering, or I'm hopefully coming out of a dose of laryngitis. I hear that. Uh, I've just come in the door to my home from Strasbourg, having spent a full week out there since last Sunday night. And there's P. Flynn on the late later. And Shin Dear Ok. Going to start to a P. Very good, Pat. And I want to take... Sorry, sorry, you're going to say something, Pat? <laughs> he was, yes. He, he because did. I want to say about Pat Cox. He greatly enhanced his reputation during the last few weeks. He was the one who put down the first resolution naming the two commissioners that Gay referred to, OK? And, but he never had it as part of his strategy. And you're listening into this, Pat, so you're, you can say it's right or wrong. I believe that you never had as a part of your strategy to sack the commission as a whole, or indeed to sack individual commissioners. What you wanted to do was to get a situation where in the future the possibility would be created in the next treaty arrangement that it would be possible to have individual accountability by individual commissioners. Laryngite to us, Pat. Gets on great with all, all, all our friends there. I'm busy. Now, you must remember that I spend two, three days a week only in Brussels. The rest of it I have to travel around to the other 14 member states, America, Japan, and other places like that. Last year, I'll give you an example, I took 164 aeroplane flights. The year before, 150 odd. So it works out about 150 aeroplane flights a year, traveling all over the world, and two or three days a week, uh, every week in Brussels. So I don't see an awful lot of Brussels, to be quite honest yeah, with you. But, you, but, but you it's a nice town, and I want to say it has wonderful restaurants and some very interesting places to go. Well done for having the courage to hold up your hand. Yes, sir. You're uh, welcome. I come from a working class uh, neighborhood in Dublin, yeah. and I've grown up uh, most of my life uh, with tribunals and different uh, scandals going on, and the corruption in Ireland, like with senior politicians being investigated for bank fraud. And now, I've really been let down by in Europe, saying that Europe is now corrupt. What, what future have we got? No, I don't want you to believe that Europe is corrupt. I want, I want you to understand about the situation about mismanagement is this, that when you're spending 90 billion a year, and it's been spent all over the world, 
Obviously, there will be miscalculations and things will go astray. But you have to find out as best you can how to correct that. Now, that's, there is nobody charging any of the commissioners with corruption. They made that quite clear. They're, what they were being charged with oh, was well, no, mismanagement. Minute, Come on. Edith yes. Cresson allegedly hired her 70-year-old dentist to assess EU spending on AIDS recently. Well, I want to tell you something. I don't know the full details about that. But the interesting thing about that is, as part of the bargain between the European Parliament and the Commission, in the, vote, the 14 votes in the vote of censure that took place last week, this week, sorry, <coughs> part of that deal is that a special committee now is being set up of Another what they call... Committee. No, no. Well, it's wise people. It's not from the Commission, the Parliament and the Court of Auditors. And before the 30th of March this year, they're going to report back in depth on all of these allegations. And it has been agreed by us that, if, if, any of the, that if any of these allegations stand up, then... Heads the are going to roll. Heads are going to roll. Come back to your I want to tell you something. Try it sometime when you have a couple of cars and, and three houses and three homes and a few housekeepers. And I want to tell you and everything else. But remember, it's a well-paid job.